Good morning. I'm sick. My glands are all swollen here, half swollen there. I'm stuffed up. Yeah, I'm taking over the counter meds. So I woke up this morning thinking to myself, I don't remember ever signing up for any of this. I'm born into a system that I don't approve of. I'm born into a system I wasn't even aware of. So you're growing up in this system and you're forced into everything. Now it's supposed to be for your own good. Your parents should know what's good for you according to what they understood from the system they were forced into. None of us come with instruction manuals, though I think we should. If there is a God, I think he should have included little instruction manuals that came attached to us. <sighs> Give me a minute. But unfortunately, we don't come with instruction manuals. Okay, that said, my son Michael said something rather profound the other day. He said, what if we're a computer program? What if God is just this, like, mathematical genius and to be able to create everything like it is? In my opinion, you'd have to be a mathematical genius. I mean, I don't believe in the Big Bang Theory. Funny that we only have two actual theories. God and creation and the Big Bang Theory. And there's nothing else. Does anybody else find that very odd that there isn't maybe a third and fourth theory? I like Mike's theory. God is this like Tesla of the sky. And he's up there doing his little mathematical equations. He probably doesn't need a board. I would imagine God, he, it, whatever. Just his head or his mind or his consciousness is the chalkboard that he's writing on constantly. Remember Lawnmower Man? I loved that movie. Only the original first one. The other ones were stupid, but the first Lawnmower Man was profound, I think. And if you've never watched it, I think you should. So, I'm forced between a rock and a hard place. I never asked for the things I feel I've been manipulated into. They said, go to school and you'll be a well-rounded, happy individual. That didn't work out well for me. I didn't do well in school. I couldn't concentrate as a child. My mind was out there in the fields. I wanted to go play in the woods. I wanted to think about, what's his name's fairy tales, Anderson's? I don't know, but I, I loved my fairy tales. I loved my books, there was a reality I'd like to be a part of. So I wake up in the morning calculating kind of like a god. If I do this and this over here, I won't have to do this and that over there. But if I do this and that over there, 
then I'm forced to not do this and that over here. Because the system says so. Now, I'm not a political person, and I don't give a damn who's in the White House. They all suck. Nobody's there for you and me, in my humble opinion. I don't know what the hell they're there for, but you want to talk about sinister? That woman from Seattle thinks I'm sinister? Why don't you go to your local politicians? You'll see sinister. I'm sinister because I doubt the existence of God. I'm sinister because I doubt the altruism of our politicians, our computer program that we're forced to live in. I fight for independence. The revolution is still on. But it is a revolution of intellect now, which is much more frightening than a physical war. I think. So I'm fighting this war of survival. But more than survival, I want some sort of abundance. I want to know that I'm okay in and of and on myself. That's where my real struggles lie, because I'm like, is this really about ephemera, old paper? Is this really about materialism and too many goods around me? Or is this about living life and living it more abundantly? Living life and being more free? That's what I'm starting to question. I don't think it has anything to do with antiques, old paper, whatever else I've got stashed away. When you're in the system, they want to know everything about you, everything you do and everything you own. And as soon as you change that, and they change the rules all the time. My SNAP food stamp benefit was good till July of this year in which I was going to make all my decisions and then they changed the month out of the clear blue. You did not keep your appointment, your food stamps are in jeopardy or whatever. Well, wait a minute. What gives you the right to keep changing the damn rules? I'm so sick of their rules. I've been playing their damn rules since my poor husband got sick. And before that, really, when I got sick, when I got sick, 2008, I applied for Medicaid. Found out that all of this illness is supposedly fibromyalgia. Now, I'm a conspiracy theorist. I'm going to let you know that right up front. Every time something doesn't look quite right to me, I have to think it through. Well, what could it be and why? Yeah, maybe I'm nuts. Well, I'm one of those um, fully functioning nuts. I can still, you know, take care of myself and wipe my own butt. This system that I'm forced into, and I don't want to be a part of, I've never wanted to be a part of it. I looked at my parents and I'm like, what's wrong with this picture? New house, two new cars, he busts his ass from five in the morning driving to work till seven at night when he comes back home. 
She's miserable. Laundry, dishes, cooking, cleaning, children. Now, don't get me wrong. I loved having children. And I loved watching their minds expand and grow. And I'd always tell them, don't believe me. Don't believe anybody. Figure this one out for yourself. The other thing I always told them is anything you need to know is in a book. Go to the library. Books are becoming obsolete. I still keep them. Certain ones, things that I think might be important because what if someday they shut down the matrix and then all of a sudden you press your phone and there's nothing there. You open your computer and there's nothing there. What if? You better know how to think for yourself. That's how I see it. Forget about doomsday prepping and physical prepping. Your mind better be ready. For what? I don't know. I just know it's one of those conspiracy theories in my mind. What is all of this for? And tell me, how much is enough for the uber rich, the ultra elites? They think they're elites. I'm sorry, they wipe their arse the same way we wipe ours. They're no different than us, except that they have a much better con than the rest of them. That's where my mind is at this morning. I'm angry because they've sucked me in. And I'm not sure how to get out, but I want out live on the fringe, so to speak. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm 64. I'm going to die someday. Good. Let it come. Maybe there's something better than this fricked up, crazy virtual reality. We don't even know if it's real, do we? Don't you find it peculiar that someone is born and they go through all this crap? They supposedly made it, and then they die? Do you remember the computer game, The Sims? That was all the rage in our house. We'd develop our own little, you know, and then came Sim City, and you could make a whole town out of it. And if you didn't feed them, they died. Your little creations. And if they didn't have the things that society said they're supposed to, they'd become depressed. It was a fun game, really, because it's so much like the virtual reality we live in. I want to create my own program. I don't like the program I've been set in. My creators of my little sim city here, I don't know. They, they didn't put me in charge. Somebody else is moving the little things in my game. Maybe this sounds totally crazy to you, and maybe I am sinister. Maybe I'm insane. Look, I cut off all my hair. I go outside the other day, and the neighbor says, you cut your hair because I had no wig on, okay? I said, yeah, I shaved it all off. It started out with me wanting to be comfortable in wigs, and now I just want to be comfortable. I did hide my head when I went with Bonnie to Waffle House, though. I'm not sure why. The last few days I've been feeling self-conscious and I don't even know why, because everybody else has hair and I don't. Up theirs. What do I care? I'm just the pawn in some bizarre virtual or cosmic game. Well, let's say there is a god. What kind of shit is this? I wasn't supposed to swear. Sorry, Pam or Pat or whoever doesn't like my swearing. I do apologize. But believe me, I had a worse mouth than this once. 
the internet and Finn definitely trims your, you know, thinking. Finn. This goshing traffic, he says. Goshing. I'd imagine it came from another word when <laughs> one of his parents was upset. Traffic. Well, you've got to go X amount of miles if you live in a van. Who made that rule? What if you don't want to go X amount of miles? What if you say to yourself, I have 50 bucks for gas. This is what I do for miles. And this is the direction I'm heading in. Where will I end up? Can I hang out there for a month? Can I go do a flea market and make more gas money and go further? Yeah, I'm dependent on the system right now. I'm always going to be dependent on that social security check, but here's the thing with that. Two things. One, my husband paid into that system and that money belongs to us. And two, what they don't know won't hurt them and it most certainly will make my life better. So if I'm selling off my private stuff here and there, cash, and they don't know about it, then I still get the social security that my poor husband worked his ever-loving at stuff off for. I think about him. He was a workaholic, so he loved his job. Not at the end. When we went into Gold Pro, we weren't Gold Pros with the S. We were Gold Pro. And we were becoming very well known up north. We were small peas, you know. We probably had about, you know, at its height of gold and silver, 200000 stashed away, plus our living expenses. And, uh, you know, then it dropped by half. Silver dropped more than that. It was actually down to 11, I Turned some in when it was 13 an ounce. After that big rush at, what was it, $49 it hit one day an ounce. <clears throat> what was I thinking about? I got lost. What they don't know won't hurt them. We didn't make up these gosh damn rules. They made up the rules. Did they ask us about the rules? Did they ask us what was fair? Who the hell are they? And what can we do about it? As a sworn anarchist, I say screw them. It's political, in a way, but it's survival in the majority of the way. Screw them. I didn't vote them in. I didn't sign up for this program. So maybe I'll just make my own damn program. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Stay tuned for more insanity in my virtual Reality. Bye.